Hey guys and welcome again to another episode of the Bola Bola Show's take on the UEFA Champions League fantasy football game. Yeah, always it's always a tongue twister for me. You know, I still still am trying to get that right. But anyway, fantasy, right? So it's all great. Everybody is having fun. Our league is doing fantastic. Hope you guys had a fantastic match day five, match day six. Beckons upon us. Remember, I mentioned it's going to be wild card week this week for us. Match day six is very interesting. The key word in match day six, I would say, is not the most expensive, but the most relevant. Let's look at it that way. We, we are not going to use up all our budget for this to get the most expensive guys on board, but the guys that we really feel are going to bank it in. And even, you know, we hope that you get some tips from this. You can slot in some of those guys that we are going to, you know, recommend into your teams. Maybe not follow our entire lineup, but get in some tips. Hopefully it works for you guys. But before that, you know, as usual, we'll review what happened in match day five before we go into our match day six selection. So stay tuned, guys, and welcome on board. Hey, guys, and let's have a look at how our Bola Bola Show Liga is doing. And, uh, you know, how the teams there are doing in the Bola Bola Show Liga. And as you can see, you know, after five match days, you know, our members have increased. We have got 30 members there. And I uh, you know team black and white from Claros. Kuro is in the lead there with 403 points. Impressive there with a match day 5 total of 64 points. Very good. And Craig Jenneke, yes, Pagamiza FC. You know, Craig has been, you know, uh, been commenting on our page as well. So I can see you're really hanging in there, bro. And, you know, good luck to you. Stay, stay in the competition there. 401 points there. 67 for match day 5. And uh, as for our Bola Bola Show team, you'll just quickly just glance. You know, we are currently in the 12th place in the league there with 355 points, a 65 point match call from match day five, basically. And what came through for us here is if you can see, uh, we rolled with Jacko and he got 13 points for us. Salah as a captain gave us 16. We expected a bit more from Adeyemi and especially the most disappointing were the Dortmund guys. And Dortmund, in fact, have been knocked out of the Champions League now. So it really does not bring any value to keep any of the Dortmund players in. And that's why we are going to do some major drastic changes for the match day six, where we are going to trigger our wild card. Yes, guys, we are going to trigger the wild card. And I'll show you exactly what are the changes we'll be making in the wild card. Um, but before we actually trigger the wild card, there will be a bunch of fixtures that we have completely want to eliminate and avoid and only focus on fixtures where teams are still fighting for a chance to either go into the Europa League or finish in the top two or even finish in the top spot in their league because those leagues that have already been those groups sorry that have already been uh, I would say settled meaning that all the positions are not going to change regardless what happens in match day six you know we're just going to avoid those games completely because we never know what are the rotations that's going to happen it doesn't make sense for them to start their stars because it's just going to uh, prone them to injury and so you know those are those are the things we are going to avoid so our strategy for the wild card is totally going to be on the relevant fixtures the fixtures that are really going to be the dog fights and there are some very juicy fixtures where we're going to target players from those teams not necessarily the highest value as i've mentioned when it comes to wild card and match day six it's not the most expensive that counts it's the most relevant the team that is in the fight there and the best players from that team so stay tuned as we reveal our wild card selection shortly Okay, guys, as promised, we have basically triggered our wildcard. And it's to show you, if I click on the make transfers, you can see uh, our wildcard is now active. So from now until the deadline, in case there are injuries that happen over the weekend and the fixtures and all that, you know, we can still swap players in and out. So this is going to be the, the, the first version of our wildcard. Of course, if there's any changes, it would happen much later down the week depending on injuries and all suspensions i mean injuries basically so we'll have to see how we manage it over there but basically from now onwards it's going to be you know unlimited transfers not on budget but just unlimited that's how the wildcard plays out so we have finally decided to go with a team as i mentioned i focused on fixtures uh not value but of course try to get even the expensive ones in because they may shine and they may come through so this is how our team is going to look completely uh change the team around basically most of our players if i filter by the date as you can see 
most of the guys are going to be playing on the 9th of December, except a few on the 8th. So that's why I put Engkungu, uh, Engkungu to be the captain on the 8th. But of course, you know, Vanekan is also a very interesting choice because Club Rouge and um, RB Leipzig are still trying to fight for that that one um, Europa League spot. So they will go a lot. Both are goal scoring threats. Engkungu has just been, you know, on fire. He's got a hat trick against Man City in the first game. So it's it, it's really an interesting uh, choice here. But we decided to go with both these guys. Uh, between captain, I'll go with Engkungu. For now, I might change my mind to Vanekan or even maybe David Alaba or Kutua. So these are the four guys that are basically playing on the first day. But if you see most of the rest of the team are all going to be coming on the second day and even this formation may change depending on how the, those four guys perform on the 8th of December. Uh, Ade Yemi still maintains himself in the team because Salzburg is a must-win game and uh, they basically Salzburg are at home to Seville. A good chance there for Ade Yemi as well. I'm um, also banking in on At- Atalanta players. Atalanta is basically at home to Villarreal in another must-win game for the qualification of the top, uh, top two spot. So that is going to be a you know a, a slap fest, I would think. And Atalanta, you know, you cannot discount people like Pasalik. So he's in the team, Zapata and Hetebo, who's, who's just returned back from injury, played over the last game on the right flying wing uh, role again. You know, he has a goal scoring thread as well. So we are including him in the team as well here. In terms of uh, the other major guys, if, if I start from the back, okay, I'll go with the goalkeepers first. So as I mentioned, Kutwa is in the team because Real Madrid are playing Inter uh, for the top spot. We'll, we'll go with him for the first day. And then we are going to go with Benfica. The Benfica have got a very interesting fixture at home against Dynamo Kiev. A win and hope that Bayern beats Barcelona, they will go through a second place team. So Benfica, I'm pretty sure, are going to go all out for this game playing at home against a very weak Dynamo Kiev side. So, goalkeeper-wise, no, we are going with Vlachi Dimos, but Vlachi Dimos plays on the second day, so that's why he's on the bench for now. Other Benfica players that were banging on the defenders, Otomendi, who has a bit of goal-scoring threat from corners and also clean sheet potential there as well, and Vertonghen as well, who also is a goal-scoring threat and clean sheet potential. So, those are the three Benfica guys that we are going with. Uh, as you can see on the bench, there's also some Man United guys. Okay, why I chose them is because they're playing young boys. This could be the game for them to really uh, a revenge game after losing to young boys, getting embarrassed by young boys. And uh, you know, this could be the game they're playing at home in Old Trafford. Uh, could be Ralph Ragnick's first game. They may want to impress him, and you know, so Teles proves uh, very well on the left wing. He would be getting a start most likely. And even Donny van der Beek, who has been starting under Carrick lately, has got goal scoring threat there. Not the most expensive midfielder. Someone you can really consider to put in your team as well. So van der Beek and Teles are part of the United squad that's going to be part of our team for this match day six. To move into defence, uh, David Alaba, as I mentioned, is going to be there. So And basically looks like I've covered the defender. So I'll go to midfield there. I've spoken about Vanekan and Ngungu for their goal scoring threat and also Pasalik is a must have if you ask me for this match day. A must have. In fact, he's been scoring a lot of goals for Atalanta from the midfield there, you know, and you, you need to get this guy on board. He's not he's not expensive. If you look at him, you know, at 7.9, he's getting on, on his form. This could be the match day he explodes. And then you'll see Federico Chiesa. This guy was in our team before. We got him out and then we bring him in again because Juve and Chelsea are, are currently 12 points each in the league. Juve may want to bank in on to get the top spot. A very juicy fixture against Malmo at home. You cannot discount guys like Chiesa and even Dybala. That's why we even got Dybala as a forward there from Juve. So we're banking in on these two Juve guys to go forward. And that should have it. There goes, this is our team for match day six. With, I would say, three guys each from Atalanta, Zapata, Pasalik and Hatabo. If you ask me, these are the three recommended guys to go for Atalanta if you're considering Atalanta players. The two guys from Juve and a lot and maximum also three guys here from Benfica, Otamendi, Vertonghen and the goalkeeper Wachidimos mainly because I'm looking more on the defensive side for them to get that clean sheet against Dynamo Kiev. 
and also rolling the dice here on Teles and Van der Beek. Hopefully, that United was, was already been uh, already true. I just want to solidify this with a win. And so, guys, there we have it. The wild card has been activated. If you look, you know, it's not. I we, I've not completed used up all my budget. It's not the most expensive guys out there, basically. If you look at the squad here. But basically, these are the guys we believe that are going to come through in this match day based on the fixtures and the positions their clubs are in. So, hope you like this video and don't forget to like uh, this, share and subscribe, even click that notification bell. Of course, you know, and um, join us on our league as well. The code is there. You can keep joining as we will move into the next phase of this tournament, into the knockout rounds where we can completely change the team again once the new year starts. For now, you know, I hope you enjoyed all these videos and See you guys again in our next video till we meet again happy new year 2022 and all the best